online. Um, we're going to open up the meeting here. It's pretty much 6.15. And we um, posted this meeting in the three public places and put it on the website and emailed it to interested parties. And we have a, a fair amount of people lined up for the public comment section, so we're going to limit that to five minutes per per person. And as um, in the startup, does anyone else have anything they want to add to the uh, the, uh, the comments? I do, but it's brief. Yep, Rob. Uh, I'm concerned about the deadfall trees down by the uh, in the ball field back behind the uh, ball at the. Where the little beaches in the Turtle River. There's two real bad deadfalls down there. A lot of people go down there. Kids go down there. And, uh, I, I mentioned it to you one time. I think you yeah. moved yeah. some bleachers. But I don't know if it's town property. I don't know what the deal is. But I think okay. it's dangerous. And, uh, All right. I'll add that to the Boom. list there. One of those trees that's fallen in the corner of the soccer field is a butternut. Yep. Prized log. Somebody should harvest it. All right. All right. So I got that on um, listed. Martha, excuse, any question? Excuse me, June. I, I didn't get either of those. I couldn't that was um, those. Rob that Gardner is. adding to the public comment that he's um, concerned about the dead trees at the far end of the ball field by the river. And dead trees. And anybody yeah. else? And yeah. Barry Chadwick pointed out that they're butternut trees. And um, they're. Everyone's by. Yeah. All right. So. Um, June. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Hey, it's Robert. Good evening. Hey, I did want to add one more item to the um, agenda, and that's uh, regarding public warnings and alerts. All right, on the yeah, comment, all right. All right, so we'll start off with the minutes from the um, prior meeting of August 23rd, and we all read through those. I did, there was one. Um, slight correction. That, um, the money that. issue there on the Forest Service bridge at uh, West Hill. Yeah. They were just put it in wrong, so we had to correct those. Yeah. So I'd move to approve those minutes as typed up. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And um, thank you, um, Josh White, for um, coming on to give us a COVID 19 update. And um, and working with Vic Roboto on that, and dear, um, you've got the floor, Josh. Certainly, thank you. Can you hear me? Very fine. Okay, very good. So I'll I'll start with some general updates uh, in terms of what's going on, and then uh, open uh, to questions that people might have. So. Um, we are in the throes of the Delta variant for anybody that's not living under a rock. Um, and uh, one of the things that is commonly misunderstood is that essentially all the COVID out there now is Delta. We don't test people because it's all Delta. Um, in terms of the effect uh, of the virus, uh, by and large, it is quite similar to uh, uh, regular COVID. Uh, the big difference is it is quite a bit more infectious. So it's easier to pass around. So uh, some of the, you know, 15 minutes of close contact, well, now you can get it with a lot less. And it's easier for vaccinated people to uh, uh, pick it up. Um, it's important to understand that when uh, uh, we talk about, well, when the media talks about what they call a breakthrough infection, um, that is a, a misunderstanding. When they, when they developed the original vaccines and tested them, um, the intent was to keep you out of the hospital and keep you from dying. They never checked or planned or evaluated whether or not you could test positive for the uh, virus later. Um, so when you say it's a breakthrough, it's, uh, uh, you're, you're claiming that the uh, um, virus is doing something or the vaccine failed to do something that it was never designed to do. And it's a little bit like claiming that your car won't fly. Well, it was never never designed to do that. Um, and so uh, the vaccines are not failing um, when they're keeping out people out of the hospital and keeping people from dying. And if you look at the overall statistics, uh, it is very, very successful. Now, that doesn't mean this is a zero risk proposition. There are definitely people that are vaccinated that get COVID and get sicker. Uh, those tend to be higher risk people. <clears throat> if you're uh, uh up there in age, 
uh, if you have problems like diabetes or lung disease, um, uh, you're still at high risk. The basics are still effective, masking, social distancing. Um, it's a respiratory virus, same as it was before. Uh, the predicted peak in uh, uh, Vermont is expected to be about 250 people a day, and it's predicted to come within the next week or two. And it's looking like that modeling was quite accurate. Um, we'll see if it goes down like it uh, was supposed to, uh, but that is definitely something uh, that has borne out uh, in terms of the prediction. And the state is using a, a Johns Hopkins modeling uh, to get that data. Uh, and uh, they're mirroring a lot of what happened in Hawaii, which has very similar vaccination rates. Um, the vaccines uh, continue to perform uh, very well. Um, they are very safe. Uh, you know, we've now had uh, eight months or so of vaccine experience uh, and uh, um, uh, almost 175 million Americans. And there are uh, very few uh, uh, side effects and the ones that they have identified are quite rare um, or oftentimes quite transient. So anybody that's not comfortable, uh, we've uh, uh, run this test on 170 uh, million of your fellow Americans and it's good. Um, so for anybody that is not vaccinated, I would strongly advocate. Um, it's a big deal and it works really well. And uh, um, it's something that you can do to protect yourself. And I can quite clearly show an increased margin of safety. The question of boosters is coming up quite a bit. Um, the data regarding the boosters thus far is largely based on lab titers. There are lab titers uh, that show that your antibody numbers go down um, at about eight months on average but that's only a lab value. They're not showing that people are getting sicker and they're not showing that people are dying. So your lab changes um, and it is probably better to get that uh, um, booster, but it's not absolutely clear at this point. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. Um, ultimately, I expect all of us to end up getting boosters. Um, and this is probably going to be the situation where it, this uh, vaccine fades into an endemic status uh, and we all have to live with it. This is not gonna go away. Um, this is gonna be like seasonal influenza. We may have to get a booster every year, we'll see. Um, but we're well past the uh, uh, likelihood that uh, COVID is gonna disappear. Um, and it'll still be uh, probably moderately dangerous to people that are high risk uh, and so, you know, a few people in every town every year will probably die from COVID much like they do influenza um, and will have to be relatively vigilant. Uh, the uh, other question that is coming up are kids. Um, they are working on uh, um, getting that FDA approved, but there's not a huge amount of data in young kids yet. Um, and this is something that well, it's simultaneously important to get it done. Uh, it's extremely important that it gets done right, particularly with all of the vaccine resistance and hesitancy out there. Uh, the FDA cannot afford to approve uh, or provide emergency authorization for something if they're not quite comfortable. I have no doubts that it's going to get approved and it's going to be fine. I do support them trying to do it right. It's anticipated that that's going to happen sometime this fall. Uh, I will leave it at that uh, and open the, my floor, I guess, to questions for anybody that has something that they would like to hear about. Um, excuse me, Mr. White, Dr. White? Yes. This is Martha Slater. I work for the Herald and I recognize your name, um, but I think, I, am I correct that you, you um, work for Gifford and what is your position there? I am the chief medical officer at Gifford. Okay, that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Josh, this is uh, Vic Roboto. Um, you know, and I know you know the Park House quite well. You led the team here last winter when they had the multiple cases and, and led the team in responding to that on site. What, what might you say about uh, people who want to go visit folks in the Park House or lead a, a community talk or, you know, a, a singing engagement or something like that? You know, the, the social activities are really important, but at the same time, these are 
you know, people who are up there in age and, and I imagine a lot of them have, uh, you know, medical histories that would put them at risk. And, you know, and, and on the one hand, we want our, our neighbors to be safe. And on the other hand, we want them to feel like they're in prison forever. So <laughs> what's, what's a good balance in terms of that? Uh, absolutely. Good question. So uh, at this point in time, I would not recommend doing a lot of visitation. Um, the, uh, if you will recall, uh, people that are vaccinated are still at higher risk and they can still get COVID. Uh, and uh, while the overall risk statistically is fairly low, um, it's important to recognize that uh, um, we are playing with fire a little bit. Um, and, uh, um, you know, in the last couple of weeks, I have intubated somebody who has uh, um, got COVID. So it's something that is important that uh, we're careful with, and um, I, I would generally recommend not visiting. I would also generally generally recommend against large gatherings. Um, you know, I, I'm not advocating that people don't live their lives. Um, you know, go out and do the things you need to do. Be reasonably careful. Wear a mask. Um, if it's essential for something like park house, you know, if you're bringing somebody food or or what have you, then obviously proceed. Um, but, uh, if it's, uh, a less essential thing, um, then, uh, please, uh, uh, try to stay away. Um, this is something that, uh, um, is still killing people out there. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the, the physical public here? No. Nope. Um, Thank you, Josh, for your time and, and coming and um, giving us an uh, update and reminder. I guess we're all pretty aware of it, but it's, it's good to, to have it set forth so clearly. Appreciate oh, absolutely. It. I, I have one quick question. Oh, okay. uh, Dr. White, in my position as a case manager with the Central Vermont Council on Aging, to your advice with Park House, would you also recommend that be the same advice for case managers making home visits to our vulnerable seniors, um, especially since some of them are not vaccinated due to medical conditions. There's gonna have to be a careful, probably case by case balance there. Um, uh, that vulnerability you're talking about is a big deal. And if someone ends up becoming ill or ending up in the hospital, uh, something along those lines, um, because they didn't get care that they needed otherwise, um, then, you know, that would also be a disservice. And so uh, it's something that we have to kind of do this little dance. Um, how are we going to work this? Um, and uh, it's, uh, uh, you're going to have to look at it case by case. How important is it um, to, uh, uh, to get to Park House uh, versus uh, other op options. Or, well, I'm, or I'm other talking about other options. home visits, not park house, but of the same kind of population, only who are still living in their homes. And yeah. uh, at this point, we're still uh, being encouraged to make home visits. But it's, from what you're telling me, we should put that on hold and just do our remote uh, interactions the way we've been doing during um, the COVID shutdown. That one's a maybe. Um, so, for instance, if you if you forego a visit to somebody that is vulnerable and they start having problems and they end up in the ER, um, they may be worse off, not better off. Um, and so that has to be a, a case by case kind of situation. All right. Thank you. Can you speak at all to the program that uh, does the contract, the contact tracing? Um, it seems to be quite the lag um, with that program of people getting notified if they have been in contact with a positive. Um, is that program going to be beefed up at all so that the contact tracing is a little quicker? So that is a state program. Um, the uh, so it's tough for me to say. I will say that uh, the state uh, doesn't have the resources 
uh, that it needs for this kind of thing, the investment in public health across the board in the U.S. is, is not really what it needs to be. Um, and uh, the other aspect to that uh, is that oftentimes uh, in, at this point, uh, it doesn't matter as much. The uh, um, uh, Delta is spreading enough and is so rapid um, that uh, a lot of it is immediate and local uh, control. So uh, it's families and workplaces making good decisions. Um, and given that Delta is all over the place, um, it's a matter of how we do with ourselves rather than relying on the state to tell us what to do. All that being said, I will say that uh, um, it is something that uh, uh, we at Gifford uh, do and can help with. Uh, and if anybody needs help, um, I would strongly encourage reaching out. Okay, thank you. And that's just a general thing. If for anybody with COVID, um, you know, uh, or worried about, you know, maybe I've been exposed or maybe I have COVID, um, uh, go ahead and reach out to the hospital. Um, we, we're happy to provide advice. It's what we've been doing all along. Well, thank you. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you're welcome to stay if you want and then hear the rest of our thrilling meeting, but uh, you may have um, dinner <laughs> on the oven here. All right, I gotta go. I gotta, uh, I gotta okay. work on dinner for the family. But, All right, yeah. Uh, again, uh, Vic knows how to uh, reach out to me and you can reach out to me individually uh, if anything comes up. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All righty. Um, so um, we have um, Vic and Catherine here and Pat from the uh, Rochester High School repurposing project discussion. And you guys have um, something to talk about? Yeah, we do. Uh, thank you, uh, Dan. Um, yeah, we want to uh, share an update on the uh, high school uh, repurposing feasibility project and request approval for three actions, which I'll, I'll get to shortly. Uh, first of all, just to follow up on from the last meeting where the select board uh, approved proceeding with the recommended consultant, which is a organization called Fairweather Consulting. Uh, the core team that's been working on this um, and working with the uh, consultant interview uh, had further discussions that week. And um, we we're convinced that in order to do a good job and not shortchange the work, it really could not be accomplished in the, the time frame that we had initially intended. You know, we we had a six month time frame in mind, um, and that was to bring in a uh, completed project in time for the uh, annual uh, town meeting in March. But again, just given the complexity and the scope of work in this project, uh, the consultant was was quite uh, persuasive in terms of of uh, arguing that this is really a nine month project. So a little longer time, not, not too much terribly longer, I don't think. And, and then in fact, due to the complexity of the project, it was probably better to have a dedicated meeting, town meeting on this topic anyway. Uh, with the, with oh, the, Vic, you cut out there. Could you repeat that last, that you said we lost that last sentence? Oh, okay. What I said was um, due to the complexity of this project, it's probably gonna be wiser and more useful to have a dedicated town meeting for this project and decision of whether or not to acquire the school, as opposed to wrapping it into the agenda of the uh, annual town meeting. Um, I, I just don't think it would, and the committee didn't think it would get the kind of opportunity for a discussion and airing and 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 uh, <laughs> talking about the results of the study, et cetera. So that, that's probably a good thing anyway. You could certainly give an update at the town meeting uh, uh, so, um, the, I want to talk uh, about a little bit about the scope of the project in, in a couple of minutes, but uh, just in terms of the time frame. So, starting in September, which we we uh, could start uh, this month, would take us into June of 2022. Uh, there is a, a small uh, uh, added cost to bring some additional engineering expertise into the project um, based on this extension. But it's all within the grant funds available, so it's not extra cost to the to the town. So, our, so our first request for approval tonight is that Fairweather Consulting proposal 
uh, for a nine month project starting September, 2021. The cost is $42,620 paid out of grant funds. Uh, if you wanna you know, come back and revisit these uh, recommendations after I'm all done, that, that's fine or take them one at a time, whichever you think yeah. is appropriate. Okay. Um, the second item has to do with a condition of the grant that which is that the owner in this case is the school board has to give written approval to proceed and give access to the building for the duration of the planning project. Uh, that's a specific requirement uh, by the agency that gives the funds. So the school board did provide that uh, approval last spring um, and granted access for a year, basically through April 7th of 2022. However, in light of this uh, uh, longer time frame, uh, Catherine and I went back to the school board last Tuesday, asked for approval to extend that access through June uh, 2022, and, and they agreed to do that. So, so we have their approval to do that. What, what accompanies that is a, um, uh, the town needs to uh, sign off on what's called a property access license agreement. <laughs> this is... Basically, it's a it's a legal document that uh, uh, that says that the uh, consultant can uh, access the property to do its work, but that if any damage is done to the building in, in doing that work, or if anybody gets injured, uh, it's the select board's responsibility. So, this issue was moot until we actually got the grant and got the consultant on board. So now it's it's time to revisit that. And I know Patty's been looking into this. Ed Harvey's been looking into this with the uh, terms of legal and insurance. Um, I'm not sure where that stands at this moment, but that's something that the uh, select board would need to agree to, uh, to um, put the grant into effect. So uh, we maybe come back and ask Pat about that. Um, and, uh, and then finally, during the school board meeting, um, there was an agenda item to decide whether or not to heat the high school building sufficiently to avoid cold weather related damage to it. And uh, the superintendent uh, had a facility consultant assess the risk and reported at the meeting that even if the building were winterized with antifreeze, et cetera, there was still a high likelihood of major damage to the building, uh, particularly the heating system, plumbing system in that Freezing could even heave the foundation of the building. Um, so it was his strong recommendation that the building not be allowed to go without heat in the winter. Um, following discussion about the commitments the school board had made to the town of Stockbridge, um, that the residents, that the Stockbridge folks not pay to heat the building, um, a rough estimate was made of what would be uh, the cost of heating the building for a year. And uh, Based on that discussion, a uh, decision was made in the meeting that uh, Rochester would need to contribute an additional $15,000 towards the cost of heat, either through the select board action or private donations or a, con or a combination of the two. So our, our, our third uh, request tonight is, is that the select board commit to a contribution towards that heating cost, the high school building. Um, our, and our concern, obviously, is that if the building is left unheated, um, I mean, then we'd have a, an unusable and an unmarketable wreck in the middle of town, and nobody wants that to happen. So that's our update. on ask, <clears throat> ask Catherine if she has anything to add to that. Uh, no, I think that was a uh, pretty full reporting. I did send uh, I did send a uh, uh, a summary of that portion of the school board meeting the following day to each member of the select board just to notify them. And while it was fresh in my mind, so hopefully they'd had a chance to to look that over. Um, the other thing is that Peter Fairweather had said that he pretty much thinks he's going to be out of the building. Um, by the April 7th deadline. And he, we also said that there'll be an ongoing uh, public outreach to give information as it's available to the town so that the process of educating the town will not be in June alone. Right. That will be when they wrap up the final figures. But as we learn things, we will be communicating that 
We want the whole process to be transparent and we don't want the town to feel that they're surprised at the time of the meeting. We want to be forthcoming with everything that's developing. And the other thing is that a part of the scope of the uh, feasibility study is not only to uh, look at the cost of the upgrades to the building and to vet out the feasibility of the proposal of the five component multi-use facility. There is also the piece that we've requested if there is an alternate and in fact better use of the building that that be a part of the information that he's that they are giving us. All right, um, thank you. It's, um, so we have three, um, three points that we were asked to make decision on. The first being um, the acceptance of the extension of the timeline from six months to nine months. And that I, I would move to um, say okay to that. Yeah. Second, yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. So we'll take that. And the uh, so the property access liability agreement. Did you look into that a little no, bit? No, but I will look into it tomorrow once we have agreed to this contract, this updated contract. Then I'll check on all of the insurance tomorrow. So can we discuss the rest of this at our next meeting and try to? Go from there. Well, I we think go? that the I think that we should make a decision on the on the heat now because it's um you know that's that's kind of important with the you know just knowing how they're going to be moving forward. But the um I'm 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 not anticipating a, a big issue with the access liability agreement. We've no, had it I'm in place. No. It's okay. been in place up to now, and so but that's something right. that we can't um. We can't overlook. We can't uh, overlook, and we can't decide that now without conferring with them. So we'll, we'll put we'll table number two for now. But I think the the big question in the room is the um, the willingness of the town to pony up fifteen thousand dollars to guarantee that the building does not freeze this winter. And it, um, it it appears to me that with all the all the energy that's been put into this up to this point and the um, and the progress that has been made that that we I would I would move that we we approve that and, and make that commitment to, to to support the process. I reluctantly disagree, but I don't know as if we have another choice really to, yeah. to in order to solve the issue that's coming for before us. Um, to leave it unheated is probably not in the best interest in the long run. Yeah. But if it turns out that we decide to do something different with the project rather than what is proposed, then it'll be a wasted amount of money possibly. But it's probably in the best interest of us if we do yeah. go forward yeah. with it. Is there a in way the that run. we could maybe come up with um, half of that money and uh, Envision Rochester committee or some other entity could could match our 50%? I'd like to speak to that. Um, first of all, I don't know that there's any funds in Envision Rochester, uh, <laughs> but, but, but the intention of course was once the town uh, makes uh, a decision about acquiring the building, we do intend to launch a capital fund campaign towards whatever the wishes of the town regarding that building will be. Um, at this point, the committee, now the task force, has brought $50,000 to the table, as well as a $3,000 matching grant that the committee members themselves are covering. So it seems to me <laughs> that since the town is the applicant, and this is being done in the name of the town, and the town represents a lot more people, uh, that $15,000 from the town would be done in good faith. And as Ethan Bowen pointed out, that should the town decide to do that, it will go a long way in improving the relationships between Rochester and Stockbridge. Just want to add that. I'm sure about that. <laughs> Can I make a comment? It's Robert. Comment on that? Um, yeah, uh, with regards uh, to 
with, with um, the second Robert um, we had um Rob Gardner on the floor and it spoke up real quick. Oh, I think oh sorry. Cost the school board for considering they're responsible for the building. And the deal hasn't been made with the town. What is he saying? We can't hear you, Rob. Rob is, is saying he, he feels that's an extraordinarily um, request on behalf of the school board since um, because um, they still own the building and the deal has not been finalized with the town. Is that... And moreover, can you hear me? No, 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 couldn't hear you, Rob. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rob. How are you? So this is how it looks to me. Um, this deal is, is in motion slowly. It's a very big, complicated decision whether or not to take this building on. To make a commitment of $15,000 now is a pretty big statement towards an intent that I don't know that we're ready to make. Furthermore, to me, it's the school board's problem and it's a political problem. Um, the school board chose, I think for about a year, to do nothing with the high school building considerations between the time of the high school building committee and uh, I guess about a year later when it started to come alive again. That's a whole year they lost. We didn't lose it. You know, the town didn't lose it. The school board lost it. So I understand the sensitivity of the problem, the difficulty the school board's in in that regard. But to me, that's a political problem of the school board, not of the town of Rochester. And I, I would at least make the uh, attempt to push it back to them for further discussion rather than giving them a check for 15000 because it prejudices this this hard decision that's coming towards us. And that's all I got on that. Um, and, and Barry, you have something yeah, you want to speak up? So? Not everybody okay, knows this. So the, the, the school board set aside $25,000 for the purpose of property division. And in that conversation that happened last Tuesday night, Ethan said, that they made this promise to Stockbridge and that if they did not, if they went against that promise, they would lose their credibility with the uh, Stockbridge vote voters. And he feels that that would also put the merger at jeopardy. But he did say that the stock, that the Rochester portion of that $25,000 can be used towards the heating and uh, electrical of that school building. Uh, so the $15,000 figure came up with what would be the, the balance left over. And it was made very clearly that Rochester is also paying for that building because we are, you know, part of the school system, part of the school board. So, but by same token, Rob, that it isn't just the school board's problem, it's both towns' problems that are in that school district, which includes us. Um, excuse me, could I add something, please? Um, uh, could I add something, please? Or, or not? Hello? Yep, yep, go ahead, Martha. Um, well, it's just, I understand that it's, it's a, a touchy issue for a lot of reasons, but to me, it makes the most sense my opinion is to go ahead and, I mean, it's, it makes no sense to me to leave the building unheated if it's going to suffer, uh, you know, it suffer damage from going unheated. Um, and then there's, it's no asset to the, to the town at all um, for whatever use, you know? And, it, and that building has got the only auditorium in the whole area. It's got, you know, there's various reasons why I think it's important to keep that building, it's my opinion. Um, and so I think heating it is is the right to would be the right decision. That's just so, my opinion. Thank you. May I make a comment? So Barry Chadwick is here. Want to say something? Then you, Robert. I didn't forget. Yeah. Well, Barry, you want to let Robert go first? Sorry, right, go for it, Robert. Hey, Dune, it's really hard to hear you. I don't know what. Are you sitting away from your microphone or something? I don't know. Not too far, but um, I'm saying go ahead, Robert. Okay, thank you, Dune. Um, I just want everyone here to know, uh, we're in a kerfuffle, uh, and I've been watching, uh, I've been to the select or the school board meetings in Rochester and in, um, in Stockbridge, and four years ago, this issue that we're discussing was coming and coming fast, and it was a, basically a freight train that it was just a matter of time. Now, I also want to share with everyone that in all the meetings, whether they're school board meetings or select board meetings, I've never seen a select board 
discuss anything to do with schools. Typically, there's a very serious boundary before between the select boards of towns and the school boards. There are two separate entities. <coughs> so I, I'm not, uh, you know, there's been a lot of concern. I've talked to Jamie about it. Jamie has some good ideas for the reuse of the school. He's the supervisor of the supervisory union. And uh, he has he has a few really, really great ideas that I think everyone would be encouraged with. Um, on the note of financing, I, I, I would commit to as much as, uh, you know, Envision Vermont or Envision Rochester and all these things. If everyone here present tonight could just reach out to friends that they know and ask if they would donate the money to uphold the school with the heat of the $15,000 and very respectively ask if they can contribute. And I, I believe that if I go on that mission, I could probably ask one or two people to help and the, 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 the $15,000 would be paid for as a donation with, with all due respect for what a lot of people who are moving into the town respect what Rochester is and they want to support it. And the most important thing is a school. So I'm willing to go out and just privately talk to people and say, hey, can we, can, is there someone that can help us? Because Stockbridge is in pain. The school board, they're all in pain. They, they, they don't know what to do with it. So, so you know. A, that's a good offer, Robert. That's, um, I mean, that maybe. Well, well, thank we're you. Open, but, we're but, open to donations, that's for sure. So well, I'll, I'll do I'll do my best to make a, a pre-donation from someone that has a lot more money than me to help. And so, it's all so, it's all about the children. It's not about the. And by the way, the supervisory union. I, this is another note, and I I don't want to overspeak, but so, so I just um, want I just I want everyone to know I, that not hold on, ninety two percent of property taxes that we pay and even the donors pay goes directly to the education fund, 92%. Yep. So I can't imagine that the, the supervisory union and the education department couldn't contribute with all that money. <laughs> so I, I, I think that that's wonderful, Robert, and I definitely would encourage you to do some one-on-one -on -one with um, the folks that you feel um, would be willing to donate but in the meantime because we do need a decision can we decide to actually commit to the 15 and then whoever makes the donation can it can go to the town and deflect whatever the the town is committed to and those donations can go through a 501c3 in the town and so therefore the town could commit to up to 15 but maybe it doesn't even have to do 15. If you're successful, and Robert, I suspect that you will be successful. Well, thank you, Captain. All right, so um, Barry Chadwick is here. He had something he wanted to contribute also. So you're up, Barry. All right. <clears throat> so I don't know all of you. I know most of you. I taught in Rochester for 22 years. I taught in Stockbridge. That was the first place I taught. Both have lovely campuses. When I was teaching in Stockbridge, we planted trees. Uh, Eric Brown was. Can't hear a thing. I can't hear a yeah. Well, I'm sorry. You guys keep butting in. All right. You don't take turns at all. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. So, great campuses. We don't want donations. If this town is going to support the school, it needs to support the school. It's been there. It has history. We don't let it freeze and destroy it for what? To prove what? That we can. How about? How about we let the, the old fire department go to the devil? I thought we put a new roof on it. Because we can? No, it's part of our town. The school is part of our town. Come on. That's all we got to say. All right, thank you. Um, Robert Mayer. Yes, uh, I just, you know, I appreciate uh, Rob's sentiment, but I think the, the problem here is we, we lose sight of that this isn't just a Rochester Stockbridge situation. This what what we're this project we're talking about is a Quintown project. I mean, this is going to be uh, a 
uh, a center that is going to be a resource for all all of these towns, and you know it, to quibble over, you know, is it coming out of this budget or that budget? It's coming. It's it's going to be funded eventually in the big picture by all of us, and and you know the, what we're talking about is is a minor amount to move the project along. We don't need a lot of obstacles. We have a very valuable shell of a building there, which with a lot of innovation, and, and if we concentrate on upfront investments in, can reduce our operating costs, which are very high right now, but they could be reduced substantially. So, you know, I think this $15,000, I, I can't speak for the school board on just one member, one, one member of the school board, they, you know, since this whole situation started, there has been a fair amount of turnover in the in the governance. You know, the, the, I'm one of the new members, um, and the, the you know there has been a lot lot of um, water under the bridge. Uh, you know, what we're really looking forward to is moving forward on on this, and how to uh, expedite it. But you know, some things just can't move fast. And you know, this I, I think is an excellent idea is to approve is to for the town to cover the cost, but we'll try and find find private donations, you know, to offset some of that. I think that that's has been an excellent, excellent idea. You know, we're this is you know, we we have to look for to the future and look for leadership for you know, improving this this town and making it attractive for people to come. There are people coming in. The, you know, you, you, I'm sure Pat could speak to it on from the as evidenced by the uh, the uh, real estate market. But and I I know that that um, Frank has has been a little dubious about whether it's our role. But do we want to become a community of second homes? No. Or do we want to be a community with, you know, a, a vibrant, you know, and younger, um, uh, active uh, population? You know, this is the whole purpose of this project is to, you know, take uh, a, a resource and 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 uh, create a uh, to improve the community's uh, ability to. Uh, attract and retain, you know, people, uh, families. Yes, here, here. May I speak, Your Honor? Robert, excuse me. Uh, what do you say? We got uh, Robert Gardner is um, has got the floor now. So, I feel pretty stupid standing Who's up. Just speaking, I can't. I don't. This is Rob Gardner. I'm on the screen. So no, I, I think Robert. I think Robert made a a very good point, but to me. It's I putting in. Who, who is Robert? Robert Gardner. No, who's the gentleman that was just speaking? Me. Robert Mayer. Robert Mayer. Oh, okay. Oh. I just think, Catherine, I'm sorry. I, I can't tell who he is, but what he said is very well respected. So, in my mind, what Robert says puts in pretty stark relief the essential question. It, are we looking, are we talking about vision? Or are we talking about money? And my problem is we haven't been talking about money and foregrounding money enough. I believe in what Robert said and, and the whole idea of an art center, that's, those are wonderful. Those are vision ideas. But how are you going to pay for it? And if you put $15,000 of our money into this, you're prejudicing the deal up front. Imagine that in a real estate deal, Patty, if you know, you're somebody who wanted to buy a house. Imagine. So I, I think it's just a poor idea. I understand the situation the, the, the school board's in. I understand the feelings, all these feelings about the school, but there's a difference between vision and money, and I just, I really wish that the money was foregrounded, and that's, yeah. that's my rant for today. Well, I would, I would like to, um, Catherine, you spoke to um, so what I was going to say is the, um, you know, why not be open to and encourage people to contribute to offset this expense and the town can act as a, the guarantor of that so if the the town i would i would make a motion that the town agree to 
to support this need of $15,000, but at the same time be open to being the vehicle to accept donations to offset that expense. <clears throat> With the committee setting the parameters for advertising uh, and getting the word out, soliciting. Why not you make a comment? Uh, just a second, Pat was just, um, she was With adding the to that. Or, uh, or some, some entity, Envision Rochester, or some entity uh, doing the solicitation for right. the funds. I agree with that. Yeah. Can so we, um, we, we have a, a motion on the floor here, so I think we're, we're disposed, dispersed with the discussion about it, and we're trying to move forward. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. I have an idea. We have, you know, we're 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 not saying that ideas. We're we're soliciting ideas, and that's and we're what we're doing now is trying to to move forward. So we have the vehicle in place to 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 have those ideas, you know, move, come forward. Move, 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 move forward for for doing what? Like, can I just make a simple comment? Quickly, one sentence, please. Hey, one well, sentence, please. What, what I was trying to say is why Martha's here, she could put a line item in her article and, and be right out in print, right out in the public yep. for donations. The other yep. thing I want to say is um, no school, no economy. And going to Robert Mayer's comment, I would like Robert to give, Robert Mayer to give a call to Jamie uh, McInerney or whatever his name is. And lastly, Right now, there's a meeting scheduled with me and the select school board, or supposed to be scheduled today, with uh, Lisa from the supervisory union, Ethan, Amy, and the whole conversation is about leadership and ownership. That's all. Okay. It, that's all it is. It's all good okay. news. You're trying. Okay. All right. Thank you. I second your motion. Yes, um, so Pat seconding the motion. <laughs> Could you, could you, could you point of order? Could we repeat them? Yeah, sorry, it got a little diluted by the. Right. Um, I was just going to ask yeah. that, Robert. All okay. right, um, so I'm going Confused. to. I want to make sure I get it correct. Yes, I, I'm. I'm moving that the town approve um, the um, commit to fifteen thousand dollars for the supplemental heating of the school, and also the town is going to. Um, stand forth as the vehicle to accept donations from the general public and others to offset that expense. And Pat had pointed forth that it would be encouraged that the the school repurposing committee and Envision Rochester that people are made aware of the request to offset that expense. Can you hear that, Martha? You got that? You're frozen. Okay, so if, if they, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, excuse me. So, that's my motion. I second that. All in favor? I do. Aye. Aye. I do favor. Okay. Thank all right. you all. Yes. All right. All right, support the so, school. You, so, I'm actually, it's, um, one remember. Just to make sure I got it correct. I'm sorry. Why don't, well, Martha, why don't we communicate tomorrow, and I can do that when we're not having the break okay, up, because your, sorry, your yes, internet I'll, keeps fading in and out. Yeah. And we can get. Sure, I'll call yeah. Julie tomorrow. Yeah, 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 that would be the way to do and that. I, and, and I will, I, I will speak to my board members for Rebuild Rochester to to get their approval. Okay. Yeah, tax exempt donations that would then right. go to the town. Thank you. Yes, in the back there. I, I know you, the select board has uh, agreed to do some stuff on this question. I just wonder. Where did the fifteen thousand dollar number come up from? What did they pay last year to heat the building? If there were students or not students in there, and so there should be some accountability on the costs. Okay. We got that. Uh, the, I don't know if you heard that, but the question came um, from the floor. Where did the fifteen thousand dollar number come from? It came, it actually came from a calculation right from the supervisory union, um, basically breaking down what the costs were in the previous years. Um, they actually know what their prepay, their pre buy figure was for this year, which is higher. Everybody's heat bill is going to be higher this year. Um, 
So they calculated it up to reflect what this year is, and then they kind of just uh, uh, backed into what Stockbridge would have been paying out of that fund to heat the high school. So what we're doing is, through the education tax, we're, we're paying our portion, and now we're also going to pay Stockbridge's portion as well. That's where the $15,000 came up. And if you wanted to go back and look at the school board meeting, which I believe is also on ORCA, um, you can see how that evolved right right there in front of our eyes. It, it was all worked out. I think okay. the total was 40000 so keep it at the same temperature? So it, the total was 40000 anticipated, and the Stockbridge portion of that ended up being fifteen. I also want to remind the, um, the select board that the reason that building was closed down was about COVID because the elementary school was accessing that building for their arts and learning curriculum. So I don't know whether that means that you can use the 15 from somebody. Not for a building we don't own, but the high the school the board building can. Now. School board, can. Um, School board can. Well, that's a good <laughs> segue. Um, I, I think that the fact that we don't own the building yet would probably limit us from using the ARPA money for that. But that is a good segue into the next item on the new business agenda, which um, Kristen has a report about the ARPA money. Unless anyone has anything else they want to say about the, the school topic right now. I have a last Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would ask the select board to ask the committee that, as seems to have been said, the communication about the <coughs> process, the money, where we are, be continually coming in. And I think they should be making reports or something. I think there's a duty on everybody's part to be absolutely transparent and, in, and upfront about this stuff. I'm not an enemy of this project or anything. Mm -hmm. I just think it really needs to be very clear. Everyone needs to understand what the risks are, what the benefits are, not just in the vision sense, and God bless you for that, but, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I'm yep. on a budget committee. Yep. You know how much money is left over at the end of the mm -hmm. year. So, so I, well, I'm just saying that, 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 that I would ask that you all, in particular the committee, make <laughs> this information as available as quickly as, and as packaged in a way as possible. Yep. All right. Um, Agreed, Robert. Um, Kristen. Okay. Yeah. We have um, received our two um, installments of our ARPA funds. Um, we um, received. Could okay. she be closer to a microphone? Yeah, you want to come up to. Can you hear me now? I uh, know. Oh, <laughs> I don't normally get this compliment. Can you hear me now? Complaint. I mean. Are we good? Now I can hear you. All right, All right super. You. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so we've received our two installments of our ARPA funds. Um, on in August, we received fifty six thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars and fourteen cents, and then in September we received the county portion of it, which was a hundred and five thousand. Um, 665.62. So we right now are at $162,615.76 that we've received in ARPA funds. Um, and we have put that into its own separate fund and um, bank account with Mascoma. And are we expecting any more from that? <clears throat> yes, yeah. next year around in August and September, we'll receive the same payments same again. Same payment, yeah. Okay. Robert. Uh, what are, are the limitations on that fund and how soon does it have to be spent? Uh, we have three years to Mary spend Strauss. it. Okay. And um, Larry, you want to speak upon the limitations? They were um, vague at the beginning and becoming clearer as time goes by. Do you have any input on that, Larry? He's working with the select board and, and navigating the, the, these waters. Yeah. Um, there are there are limitations. Um, they're they're broad. Uh, there uh, there are some uh, several broad categories that, uh, that uh, of allowable uses, but there's a lot of uses within those categories, um, and uh, so there's there's a long process ahead for the town to ultimately decide specifically how to use it. Um, 
and the select board is just beginning that process. The, uh, the funds have to be uh, um, allocated by 2024, but they don't have to be spent until 2026. So there's, 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 there's it's not something that the town has to rush into. Um, but, um, you know, but essentially that, you know, it can be used for broadband, for infrastructure. Uh, it can also be used to uh, backfill for COVID related expenses that occurred, you know, uh, during the uh, pandemic itself. Um, so th th there's really, it's, it's th there's quite a broad range of possible expenditures that can be, you know, chosen. Um, and the money can be paired uh, with, you know, other uh, funding, uh, for instance, for water or sewer projects, you know, could be paired with, you know, our money could be matched uh, with other state funds, um, you know, which might give you a bigger bang for the buck. So there's a lot of work to be done to decide. Um, and there is, um, yeah, so it, but, There'll be a, a some type of, it, up to the select board, you know, to have some type of public process to get uh, get public input on, you know, on uh, how to ultimately, you know, choose where to spend it. I have a question. Yeah, Barry. Could those funds be used to fund the sheriff patrolling our roads? <laughs> I would. <laughs> um, I, I would think that that would be um, a, a hard one to justify a COVID response basis. Uh, it might not be impossible, but I, I don't think that that would be one that would easily fit into a category. Did you um, all hear that question in the, on the no. cyber much, world? Much, um, much. Barry asked um, Larry um, if the uh, ARPA funds could be possibly used to bolster the presence of the sheriff in town, and Larry said that would be uh, um, probably a stretch and, and a hard sell on, on that. That's what that question was. And, and the gist of what Larry was saying... Um, in response to the question about what when we have to um, spend it, that's it's going to be an ongoing process, and we're we're not rushing into it, and we're going to um, develop a, um, vehicles to gather public input on this decision. Also, once we really have clear ideas about where um, what our options are. Thank you, um, Kristen and Larry. Hey, John, can I make a comment? Sure. Um, is there any? Well, has a select board meeting. Um, By chance, could, some, could all participants walk up to a microphone? I had no clue what Larry just said. I, I, and I don't know how Martha's reporting because I could not hear. It's all jarble. Yeah, that's. You are, I'm just thinking, you know, there must be a COVID protected microphone so that everyone can hear what's happening. I can. Yeah. Well, that's why I kind of summarized it for that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And thank you, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, we'll try. If people have specific comments, they really want uh, everyone to hear. It wouldn't like when Kristen came up. That was a good idea. Um, <clears throat> So, um, I'm the next one going to speak on behalf of Joan because she's not here tonight, but I have her updates. So, are you hearing me? Am I talking loud enough? Yes, thank you. Yes, all right. Um, so, um, since her last report, Joan has been assisting Julie and Kristen with preparations for the annual audit and developing systems for integrating grant-related information with NEMRIC. And she has been keeping in touch with Cooter on FEMA road projects that are being completed this year. Also, continuing to complete all documents and backup documents and making sure they all reconcile uh, properly. To could you speak a little slower? Sorry. Larry can do that. Okay, you want me to? Okay. But you can hear me. 
Yeah. Yeah, I can we, all right. you, which I let you, you know, you'll send her a you know, copy of this. Martha, what we'll do is we'll send you a copy of this so you have that and you can you can <laughs> you can read it in person. That might that might make right, it easier. All right. We'll talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, she's continuing to compile all documents and backup documents and making sure they all reconcile properly to submit to the Vermont Department of Public Service for reimbursement of the FEMA road work done through December of 2019. And she's going to start on the remaining FEMA road projects completed in 20 to 21. And tasks related also to the completion of the Nason Brook culvert replacement. And she is working with VHB and Green Mountain National Forest towards the completion of the contract design, stream alteration, and Army Corps permits, updated construction cost estimate, and bid packages are now getting underway for, I'm assuming that is the West, West Hill Bridge. Um, she is preparing to work with two private landowners adjacent to the bridge for temporary and permanent easements in addition to the Green Mountain National Forest, which will give us the authorization on their property we're hoping to have everything ready for and going out to bid January of 2022. That timing depends on how soon the permits are approved, especially the Army Corps, and how fast the construction funding arrangements move along. And uh, the last item on our list here is that we have received a draft memorandum of agreement from the Federal Highway Administration for construction funding in partnership with the Green Mountain National Forest and she is reviewing that with the Green Mountain National Forest staff. Lots of details still to be worked out, including the funding. The grant approval is $600,000 and construction costs before the final update by VHB are estimated at 663,000 $663, before contingencies. Once we have VHB's final construction cost estimate, we'll know if we need to look for more funding, which is the expected outcome that's green mountain national forest responsibility and if it's needed it could delay going out to bid and of course you will keep us updated um so yes back there you want to come up and talk so they can hear you not on the, really not really but that way i don't have to repeat what you say yeah so uh, uh my name is larry creech i live on west hill and we've been the squeaky wheel in the town for a long time about the bridge uh, reconstruction. My question was, the $60,000 that was earmarked in the paper, is that some of the funding that's coming in for the bridge? Or? I, that may have been a that's misprint just the design too. Work. Was that just for the design, that, right? That was for engineering and design. There you go. Okay, so yeah. I know they did engineering last year, so I didn't know what that was for. Mm -hmm. um, my main concern is when I read the paper every week, I saw that a great many people um, confronted the Forest Service about the, the forestry cuts that they're going to have ongoing in our district. And my fear is, is that this group may dig in their pockets and hire a legal firm to stop the Forest Service from doing anything and that would affect the bridge because if they can't cut the Robinson track up there, then they would have no need to fix the bridge. So I don't know, we're kind of on a tricky, a slippery slope here to some degree. And so those are some of my fears because 300 people confronted the Forest Service uh, people a couple weeks ago, a month ago, and were screaming and hollering at them. They don't want anybody to cut anything. <laughs> And I'm not in favor of that at all, but it's not because I want a bridge on our road. It's because it's a well-thought-out process by the Forest Service. So I just wanted to let you know about that. And the other, the other small concern, again, more squeaky wheels here, is that if we could get somebody before winter to trim some of the trees that are very low overhanging the road, because if we get a snowstorm, I don't think my car is low enough to get under everything. Yeah, actually, the um, I think we're getting the mower on the twentieth. Yep. Yeah. So okay. that's that's that'd that's, be great. Yeah, that's um. They did a great job grading. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
but I guess you know there's a lot more work and culverts and stuff that you're gonna do at yeah, some after point the, after the bridge. We can, okay. we can, uh, I can talk with Joan about that to see what the uh, long-term implications might be on that project as far as if if they do run into a snag, will the bridge still be constructed, that kind of thing. Okay, we can find it. out something about that. <clears throat> do you mark that down? Um, so excuse me, Dune. Yeah. Uh, who do I, uh, to get a copy of Joan's report, do I do? Uh, yeah, well, um, just, you could just, yeah, um, Joan will, will send it to you. I mean, not Joan, Julie. Uh, Julie. Julie. And she could email it to me? Yes. Or something. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. It's just, it, sometimes it is hard to, for me to go as fast as everyone else is going. <laughs> and I yeah. want to make sure I get all the details correct. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, let me just write, make some notes here. Um, all right. Um, thank you, Joan, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> She's singing tonight. Yeah. Um, I don't see Tony Goopy here to give us any updates from the library and um, and the highway. I guess the the coming project now is the the renting of that mower that we'll have. So that's um. Right. So roadside mowing and for tree roadside mowing happen. and tree trimming. Yep. And that's something that Martha should put in the paper to make people aware of that. Did you hear that, Martha? Roadside mowing is what the highway department is doing. It's roadside mowing, and is there is a day it's starting? On the twentieth. And so that would be good to put in the paper. So roadside mowing will start September twentieth. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Terry, have you got anything you'd like to contribute tonight on the, the utilities scene? Uh, they're coming to change those controls over on Thursday up at the sewer up site what? four. They're on the sewer site four, are getting some controls changed on Thursday. I'm sorry, what? what if... Sewer site four, Martha. So, Sewer site four, okay, I'm sorry, it's just everybody keeps breaking up. Sewer site four is getting controls changed on Thursday? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, we don't have Jeff, our energy coordinator here tonight, but um, it's, um, I know he's been involved in, in um, contributing information and input to the whole um, <coughs> situation with the High school building analysis, so it's uh, we're good to have him on deck. So, on to the um, don't have any old business listed in the public comment session. Um, Barry Chadwick, you're up with your um, your thoughts about a memorial plaque for Eric Wells. So should I stand over there? So um, yeah, you stand, stand over here. Just speak loud towards the computer so they can oh, hear what you're saying. I can't find my belt, so excuse the rope, but it that's hurts. all right. Um, all right. Damien Sleep, and, and I hope all of you have seen it. There's a beautiful stone that came from the North Hall of, of, Vermont, of Rochester. It used to be Lucy Sprague's Meadow, and I don't know who owns it now. It's right in the corner by the tennis courts. There's a plaque on it for Damien Sleep, a young man who tragically died in this community, target practicing with a friend. Revolvers I hate. You can, and he shot himself in the head. And don't you know my wife was in the emergency room at Dartmouth? when they brought him in. All so right? Gary, I think you're gonna to have to speak up. All right, but you know what, they need to come to me. <laughs> All right, now, so, there's a plaque there, Damien Sleep Memorial Soccer Field. Now, jump forward, graduate of Rochester High School in 1993, Eric Wells, great student, great athlete, great friend. He was my daughter's lover all the way through high school. He came to our house, she went to his house. All right. He went to UVM, got a degree in applied ag agriculture. Bought a farm in the Northeast Kingdom, started raising organic chicken. Got, mar got married to a German lady, had two beautiful daughters. And then, Eric had one fatal flaw. It was depression. I think he got it from his dad, who was a brutal alcoholic. Eric lost his farm, lost his wife, lost his children, lost his life. He killed himself. Um, I've talked to Joe, I've talked to my daughter, my, my daughter, my daughter said, Dad, I don't understand. 
Well, Eric never shared that dark side of himself except with a few key friends. J.R. Laffin, Jamie Stevenson. Kept him from my daughter, kept it from his mother. She knew, kind of, but she didn't know how bad it was. So, I want to place a plaque for Eric Wells right next to Damien. There's room, the exact same size, exact same color, everything for Eric. That's what I'm asking the town to do. I'm not asking them to pay for it. I'm just asking them to give permission for me to get Jimmy up the road to make the plaque and to put it there beside him. That's what I'm asking. Is his mother all right with that? Did she you is all with right it? with that. You did yeah. talk to the family? We're having, a, I call it an E union because all the kids in, rock, in high school called Eric E. Um, at Jendron's on October 2nd, um, I said, Jill, you don't have to come. I know, I know it's not going to be easy. So I don't know if she'll come or not, but she knows. I've kept her right in the loop the whole time, Frank. Okay, I, I was just curious. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you, Barry. And, excuse me, I, I, where, I'm, I'm unclear as to where the, the plaque for Damien is currently. It's, it's right by the parking lot by the tennis court. Down by the ball okay, field. I, that's what I thought. I yeah. thought I had yeah. seen it there. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. So that's on town property. That's, um, I don't know, you guys, what are your thoughts? What will the plaque say? It would say, I don't know exactly what it would say. It would say Eric Wells, date born, date died, athlete, friend, neighbor. That's what it would say. Well, I, I think that it'd be nice to um, um, do some more diligence and asking around and, and, and talk with people in town to make sure there's no um, nothing that we're not thinking of that would be an issue. And, and with the, the Sleeth family, if they would feel um, you know pushed out by, by sharing that, I doubt it. I don't know, but I, I don't think we should make that decision right now, right. but but I think it's a, 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 a neat idea and I, I, I would like to to dig into it a little more. I, I would think you'd want to talk with Greg Price about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Greg. Yep. Yeah. Um, Vivian's no longer so no, no, here, so, no um, and Bob has passed too, I think. Yep, he has. So. So let's, um, let's, um, Table that idea and, 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 and give it some thought, and, and it's a very it's thoughtful it's thank not, you. Greg. It's not a rush. Yep, it's nope. definitely no, not a rush. Thank you. All right, great. All right, and next in public comment, we've got um, Robert Franks. You have a whole list of things that you'd like to speak about. June, it's really hard to hear you. I, the mic keeps going in and out. I don't know why, but I think that's the nature of. Um, Nature of the Zoom platform, yeah. But you heard me enough to say that you're on, right? And you got five minutes to lay out um, your concerns. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, so I I would su suspect that everyone present tonight is uh, curious and suspicious as to why I'm on this meeting tonight. And so I thought it would be proper to give you the perspective and the connotation of why I am here. And I wish uh, Dr. White was still online because the concerns that I have are regarding exactly what he was talking about. And this goes back to the covert replacement, the, the passability of that road, the covert, and the um, public access to the use of that road. And I just wanna share this. this. This concern originally was about caretakers the elders, road use, rescue, and the state police. So on, on, on Sunday, I'll tell you the date, it was Sunday, um, the excuse me, it was Sunday, the 22nd of August, that I was told that the road is passable. So with that in mind, with respect to the caretakers, the elders, 
the, the lack of road use and rescue and state police, I on Sunday was told the road is passable. And I'm like, that's impossible. It's not gonna open till uh, September 2nd. So I, I said, you know, I'm gonna go try the road. Well, I got through. And the first call I made was to the White River Ambulance Company. And the second call I made was to the state police. Just trying to make certain that they are aware that the road is passable, maybe not legally by the public, but because I had visited a very well-known elder in the town of Rochester and the concern of his caretaker, more worried about if something happens, she's trying to she was trying to calculate if something happens, how long will it take the White River Ambulance Company to get to this home? I said, I don't know. So in all due respect, um, I on Sunday called the state police, called the uh, White River Ambulance Company, left messages for Sally and Matt over at the White River. I called the state police office. They thanked me for saying, sir, thank you so much, the dispatcher, to say that the road is passable. So on Monday, I reached out to Rick. Uh, he, it doesn't look like he's here anymore. What is his name? Rick, Rick Ribaldo? Ribaldo? Hello? Yeah. And I reached out to him to, to, just to make certain that he's aware of this. Well, it turns out that on Friday, um, I don't know what the person's name is, Mr. Severy, whatever, had called the White River Ambulance Company to alert them that the road is passable. The state police, I don't know whether the um, that person called the state police, but the most important and wonderful news was that Rick, the, I, what's his name? Mr. Ribaldo. It's Vic, not Rick. Vic, I'm sorry, Martha. He called me Monday morning at 8.30. He said, Robert, it's okay. I got the message. I, I, I know the road's passable. And it was so happy. I was so happy to hear Vic just confirm. So the next thing I get is a call from um, Matt at the White River Ambulance uh, mon that Monday morning at 8.30 saying, Robert, we got your message. Sally has your message. And I said, just thank you. And they thanked me. And I'm, I'm not in this world to be thanked, but it was really important to me because there are a lot, this goes back to the need in, an, in a nanosecond for an elder to be taken down by COVID and really needed to be moved out fast. So I, you know, uh, I wish again, Dr. Josh White was online because uh, so to, to, to help you with your curiosity of my involvement, that is what transpired was everything that is included on this evening's agenda, because I looked into all kinds of things. And I think it would be proper and respectable for the town of Rochester, the select board members, all the employees and the appointed employees, the uh, oath given employees, to just look at the, the list on what is now presented publicly and um, maybe have a meeting and sit down and say, what, what is conflict of interest? What is uh, accountability? What is conflict of interest? Because there's so much exposure that I just, I'm just, uh, I think it's, I, I think it's, it's not my, the suggestions have been made. It's not my business. To, I could go on for a week. I could. You, you could go on for weeks, but we've, you've gone on for your five minutes, and I, I, I guess you've made your point. And, um, and um, thank you. Well, uh, well, no, yeah. well, well, wait a no, second. No, yeah, yeah, that's you. We've uh, got you're, five you're, minutes you're, for you're, you. You're, uh, okay, you're saying I made my point. So, what is your interpretation of my point? That um, uh, we'll take it under advisement that your point is that you're concerned about everything and about safety, public safety. Thank and you. Um, and that's and we've got your, um, you know, we've, we've ran over your five minutes a little bit. So um, thank you. And um, 
going to move on to Rob. You had a concern about the dead fall, the dead, falls, the dead, yeah. the dead trees up there. Yeah, I wish I, I don't know if that's town property. I don't know. I'm sure that you could find a guy in Vermont with a chainsaw, but uh, I, I don't know whose responsibility is. But I, it's dangerous down there. If you saw those in the woods, it would be dangerous. So uh, I'm, I'm putting that forward and hoping you guys can. Okay. Do All right. Thank you. And I think that pretty much covers what's on the agenda tonight. And thank you for coming in person and thank you for coming in the cyber world. And um, that's it. Good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you, folks. Thank you, June and Julie, for helping me out with, with copies of things. Yeah, we'll get you a copy of that. Yeah. I appreciate it very All much. Right. I'm sorry that I can't hear everything. Okay. Thank you. I can hear a motion to adjourn. All right, have a good evening. All right, everybody. move to adjourn.